how to plan a website structure. Behind this apparently simplistic question actually lies the success or failure of a website creation project. So stay tuned if you want to make your website creation project a success. Hello, I'm your host, Kay Sinio. I'm a digital alchemist. And today we're going to see how to plan a website structure so that your website creation project can actually be completed. Maybe not all, but many roads lead to Rome, so this is not the only way to do it. But with a few years of experience, I'm sharing with you a simple yet effective way to tackle the task. But before we hop on the computer, let's see what's at stake. One, why is the website structure important? Planning is crucial when it comes to creating a website, especially if you're charging for it. But even if you don't, you need to know what you're going to have to build in order to know the resources that you should allocate to the project. Now we're talking about human resources, but finances also. And it all starts with a plan. Now, would you consider building a house without having some kind of plan? Well, it's the same for a website. The more time you spend outlining how the website will be structured, the less surprises you will get when it's actually time to create the website. Now, once again, if you're building a website for yourself, all you may lose is time, but if you're charging for it, you will lose money and possibly a lot of money and time also. Two, which tools do you need? Now, you can use pen and paper if you wish, or if you prefer to do it on the computer, you can use free tools such as Notepad on Windows or, or Text Edit on the Mac. Now, if you want dedicated tools, there are plenty, but to be honest, I prefer to use something like Photoshop or even better, Affinity Designer, which I've already talked about a lot on this channel because I love Affinity product and I'm not being paid to say that. Let's be clear about that. Now, if you don't have any of these tools, you can still use the GIMP, which is completely free. Three, the brief, identify the needs. The brief is very important because this is where the outline of the website starts. You can make it as long and complicated as you wish, but I like to keep things simple. So basically what you need is first to gather the stakeholders. Now, if it's just you, then you're already there. But if there are several people that have their say, make sure you plan a meeting ahead of time. Next, when the meeting comes, start brainstorming. For example, what type of content is absolutely crucial on the website? What type of content would be nice to have while not essential? What actions do you want the users to perform? Now, if possible, interview the people from the company, but also customers or potential customers. Also, make sure that you think about the user experience, and you'll see what I mean in a moment. Four, check the competition. Once you've got the initial brief, make sure that you Google the keywords for which the company wants to be found. And I'm talking about long tail keywords. Now let's take an example. Let's say that you'll be building a website for a co-working space. So you would type something like co-working space plus the name of the city and possibly even more keywords. Now look for the top websites and start analyzing the content and the structure that they have. If they're ranking on the first page of Google, they must be doing something right. right. Now, SEO is much more than that, and that's beyond the scope of today's video, but it's important to take it into consideration. But also, from a user experience and logical point of view, it may give you a different perspective than what came out from the initial brainstorming session. Compare the results of your analysis to the website structure that initially came out of the brainstorming session and make the necessary amends. If your client does not understand why you want to change the initial structure, the competitor's analysis will bring objective points to the table in the interest of the client. Now, I'm not talking about a long and detailed analysis, but you should definitely take the time to study the competition. If you're creating the website for a company, at this stage, you will know exactly what the website will be about, and it will help you evaluate the costs and the time frame of the project. Five, reorganize the structure with the end user in mind. Now, you should try to limit clutter as much as possible. And in that perspective, try to organize the navigation of the website so that the first level has no more than seven elements. Now, why seven? Well, because our short-term memory apparently feels better when there are less than seven elements. Now, if you know me, you know that I like to teach with concrete examples. So, let's build on our co-working space example. Let's imagine that the client is a new co-working space called Cowork, and they want us to create their very first website. Let's take a look. 
So the initial brainstorming session is done and I went on to Google and look for co-working space, London, for example. So I found a few uh, websites and one of these is this one here. And uh, match that with the uh, initial brainstorming session. So, for example, they have locations because they have multiple locations. And in our example, it's actually the same thing. And during the brainstorming session, they, they didn't really think of separating the pages, but then um, they wanted to put everything on the same page. Now we look at this website and it's actually better for SEO to have several locations. So that's one of the ideas you could match uh, in the final draft. So if you take a look, um, I'm using Affinity Designer, but as I said, you can use Notepad, Text Edit, Photoshop, whatever you want, the GIMP, anything you want, basically. And I have a list of the pages that I need. So what was supposed to be initially uh, like five pages, you know, like most clients will, uh, will come and say, yeah, I just want the easy website, very simple, five pages. But then it becomes more like 20 pages. Uh, so we have home, contact, about, team locations, which is the, the page where all the locations can be uh, clicked on. Then we have location one, location two, location three. For the example, let's say we have three locations Then we have the rates. Then we have the call to action with the offer page. Um, we'll talk about that in a moment. We have the blog. Uh, then for the blog, we need categories, single posts, of course, Privacy policy, cookie policy, terms and conditions, legal, sitemap, search results, and 404 page. Uh, more or less, uh, that's all we need in a nutshell, but I'm sure uh, I left some of it out. Now, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you need to take in, uh, into account that there should be maximum seven elements on the first level of navigation because you don't want people to be overwhelmed when they... Uh, they come to your website. Now, if you don't believe me, take a look at this. Let's imagine that that is the navigation of the website because this is all the pages that we need except for the 4-4 page, the search results, the categories, and the single post. If you don't know what a 4-4 page is, basically it's when you try to reach uh, a, an address that doesn't exist or doesn't exist anymore. So it's an it's a in-between page that can redirect you and tells you that you are lost. Now, uh, back to what we were talk talking about, just imagine that you land on the website and this is the navigation that you see on top. Well, that's way too much. I mean, I don't know about you, but my brain is like, yo, where do I look? So that's what I meant when I said we need to take the end user uh, into consideration. We need to reorganize the structure. So I took all of those pages, it's a big soup and I changed it to that. So we have uh, we have our header and our footer. And basically um, what people will see is those five elements and the sixth one here. Now I said you can go up to seven elements. You don't have to go up to seven elements. If I could have four elements, uh, you would be even better. But uh, let's say that I need those five here and the call to action here. So basically I have still have my home page, and then I decided to have a um, top navigation called Cowork, which is the name of the fictional company, uh, client company. So we have Cowork and within Cowork we have about, we have the team page and the contact page. Now there could be a controversy for the contact page because uh, most people are used to have the contact page either on the right hand side on the top or in the footer. Now, in most cases, I would say, yeah, of course, I would put it there. But um, in this case, I'm actually thinking about a real life project where I had a customer, he didn't want people to keep on calling and contacting uh, because he didn't um, have enough staff and they were on the phone all day long. He wanted people to fill in a form and actually people to come in. Um, in the showroom where he was. It was not a co-working space, but he had a showroom. So um, that's where this idea came from. Otherwise, just put the contact there. So um, contact is here. Then we have the locations page, and then uh, you can go to each location right away. Then you have the blog, then you have the rates, and then we have the try free offer. And basically that's why I just explained the try free offer is a page with a form. And basically for this example, it could be that people can get um, a couple of hours free in the co-working space or a full day free. So it's like a discovery offer. And when they click here, they will end on that page. Next, we have our footer where we, uh, we would have the legal, 
um, page, then we have a privacy top menu. And when people click the land on the page where they can see the privacy policy, the cookie policy and the terms and conditions. And then we have the, the sitemap, uh, which is uh, quite important for SEO purposes. Okay, so this is uh, what it looks like in text. Now, if you want to go one step further, you don't have to do that, but uh, I find that it helps oftentimes. I go into something a bit more visual. Um, now, this is not completely accurate because when you look at the navigation, home is at the same level than the other pages. But basically, um, the way I do it is that, of course, home is always the, the main page. And then you have the pages that you can reach straight from, uh, from home. So this is the first level in the navigation, as you can see here. And then we have the sub pages. And in the navigation, if we go back, blog, it's only blog, right? It's only one page. But the truth is, you have the blog, then on the blog, when you land, you get you, uh, in this example, you should be able to click on different categories. Could be events, could be, I don't know, classes, many things that um, the company would want to show. And then within the categories, you have the, you have the posts. Then we have our rates and the rest of the navigation. And once again, uh, here we have a thank you page. Now you don't have to have a thank you page, but uh, for tracking purposes, it can be interesting to send to the thank you page. So basically the thank you page would not appear in the navigation, but it's there. And then we have other pages that are not accessible uh, right away from the navigation, like the 404 page that I mentioned earlier, the search results, if there was a search function, which in our fictional case uh, would be the case. Then uh, we have the legal uh, privacy policy cookie and terms and conditions that we saw in the footer. Now, in real life, how does it translate? So this is how we, uh, it would look. This is just a wireframe prototype, so it's not a final design, but we have the homepage here. Then you have a, uh, the co-work top level. Then we have about team and contact. Then we have locations. Then we have our blog, then we have our rates, and we have a call to action. Of course, in a real life scenario, you wanna have enough contrast so that the call to action is visible uh, and spotable. So um, basically the idea is that it must be very simple for people to find the information. If you wanna know the, the pricing, uh, you see that rates is in the top level navigation. It could be labeled pricing or rates, it depends. Uh, blog because let's say that for our client, it's important because that's, they, they have a content strategy. So they want people to also click on the, on the blog if they don't land there from Google. Um, the locations is very important because if, you, if you're if you gonna be a customer in a co-working space, you wanna be sure that the co-working space is where geographically you want to uh, actually go. So that's very important. And then things like about us, of course it's important, but uh, because we want to have less than seven elements, it was um, important to group some of the topics under uh, sub-navigation. So here we have about, team, and the contact, and I explained why we put a contact there before. Now, if you go to the bottom of the page, uh, right here, it's very small, but let me make that bigger. We have the name of the company, then we have the link to the legal page, link to the privacy top page, and to the sitemap. And if we um, take it to the next step and look at the design, this is how it, it would look, for example. So we have our call to action visible, then we have another call to action here. And basically the idea is to make this very simple so that people actually stay on the website and they can easily spot and find the info that they need. So I hope that this video showed you how to plan a website structure and that it will help you for your projects. Now, if there are other web design and website creation topics that you'd like me to cover, please let me know in the comments. And by the way, you find the companion blog post on my website, casino.com. And of course, the direct link is in the description of this video. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please like it as it really, really, really helps growing this channel. And if you know someone that could benefit from it, please share it now. If you're not a subscriber yet, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and smash the notification bell so that you don't miss anything. 
Now, if you want to brand market and grow your business in the digital age, then make sure you subscribe to my email newsletter so that you never miss a share of Digital Alchemy, as well as tips, tools, services, and case studies that can help you grow your business online. So that's it for this video. I hope to see you in the next one. And in the meantime, don't forget to invest in your success. Thank you.